Look, look at the chart of TLT, which is a proxy on the bond market. Look what it's doing. So interest rates are going straight down. We're not worrying about inflation anymore. At least for now, um, it's a flight to quality and out of risk. Yep. Um, the second part is. Dennis, how are you doing? Good, Andy. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm doing well. It's interesting to note we uh, talked about a week ago, and actually we've been talking, the last time we talked was about a week ago, and we've been talking really for a year now, but everything we've been talking about really within the last couple of weeks is really starting to happen. We were we became we became negative on equities. We really had a significant pullback. Um, and I want to know, let's talk about that in a second, but I want to know if that's, in your opinion, the sign of something bigger. We talk about commodities selling off, specifically oil and the energy sector, and they've been selling off. We've been talking about strong, precious metals, specifically gold, gold the leading, and that has been strong. And we talked about the potentially of a dollar rolling over. So where are we with all of that? And let's start with equities. Yeah, I and mean, everything uh, we were talking about, especially a couple of weeks ago, came true. Um, so the indicators didn't, uh, didn't fail us. Um, I think there is more to go. I think it's a start of something bigger, but uh, I mean, like we're talking equities. I don't think, not sure. If it's a big, bad, bear market or not, uh, probably not. There is not enough technical evidence for this yet. Um, but the two things that uh, is working against, uh, is against the stocks. Uh, the first thing is uh, clearly the economy is slowing down. And uh, every economist, including me or anybody else, we're talking about it for a year and a half. Soft landing, no landing, you know, and right now it looks like we're landing. <laughs> it depends on we're going to land hard or soft. I mean, you, you saw the reports, uh, like the ISMs already below 50, uh, the unemployment rate is, you know, it was a disappointing, disappointing report this Friday. And usually the market would celebrate it because we're fighting inflation, but this time the market said, oh no. Well, no, forget inflation for now. Uh, this is a little bit more serious. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a recession yet, but I think we got more to go. And those two days that we sold off, Thursday and Friday, and actually futures are down pretty big this morning. I saw them uh, like an hour ago down over half a percent. So we're not even bouncing yet. Uh, kind of scary. The VIX went to almost 30 from 15 to 30 in two days. That is, that is a huge move. Uh, the future is that is a sign there's a lot of trouble underneath. I think so. I mean, sometimes VIX has a spike, you know, it's just a scare for a day or two or some other times VIX has a, what we call a swell. So it's not just one spike and we're going down and everything is fine. And, uh, it's just, just a scare. I don't think it's just a scare. I think even if we're not going into a big bear market, I think the stock market will have at least a 10% correction or more. NASDAQ 10% is all, correction from here? From the top. From, from the, top. the top. So down about five right now or something like that. So now another five or six. Let's, let's take a look at the charts. Just a couple of things I want to share. So this is the chart of VIX. I mean, over the last, well, what, year and a half or so, we can go further. This is the highest level since, you know, we had a uh, like 2002 bear market, 2003. So I don't think it's just a little spike. It might take, uh, it might take a little bit. Let's take a look at UQQ. We're talking about rotation. So we said that uh, if the market goes down, that's what we're expecting that NASDAQ would suffer the most. And that's what it's doing. I uh, had a great, great run. And right now it's going down. This line is 200 day moving average. This is the chart of QQQ. Right now it's just 448. Uh, this line is at 429. I think that's where we're going at least. 
as a minimum. So that's about a 5% move lower. Another 5%, yeah, at least. Uh, look at the volatility at the bottom, just like VIX, you go straight up. So that's where we are. And the first thing is obviously the economy. So forget inflation for now. I don't think it's that important. Uh, and look, look at the chart of TLT, which is a proxy of the bond market. Look what it's doing. So interest rates are going straight down. We're not worrying about inflation anymore, at least for now. Um, it's a flight to quality and out of risk. Yep. Um, the second part is, uh, well, the first part is the economy. The second part is what's going on in uh, Israel and Middle East. And uh, as soon as we started thinking that maybe things will calm down and the cooler heads will prevail, now we a couple of assassinations. And um, Iran will respond. And I'm surprised it didn't respond yet. So, uh, but it might happen any day. And the market is nervous about it. Uh, now when the, the United States and England uh, send a lot of ships to the area, that's always that creates tension and nervousness. And I completely understand. So, you know, if something gets out of hand, then forget that 5% correction and it will drop 20. It's, yeah. And, Easily help us. That's what VIX freaked out and bond market is freaking out. So, this is not a one or two day thing. I mean, we might bounce on Monday. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But it's, uh, it's something a little bit more serious. We have to keep an eye on it. it Which, is this, is it, not to interrupt you, is this a situation you mentioned in the beginning of our talk where um, bad news was in essence good because it would show that the Fed was softening? or potentially softening, but it's becoming now a cycle of where bad news is bad news. Would you say that's correct? Exactly. Precisely. Now bad news is bad news. I think inflation is kind of on the, on the back. So we're not thinking about it much. It's the, just, it's the economy and thinking what kind of lending are we going to have. Uh, for example, in real life, I don't see the slowdown, but the economic reports, all of them are showing significant slow to slowing down they got so we'll see we'll see what happens but yeah bad news are bad news and good news are good news that's that's what we have got it let's talk about you looked at the equities um let's talk about um commodities how are they holding up particularly oil and how do you yeah, see that playing out yeah here's the chart of uso I was a little bearish, as I mentioned. Um, the reason was I thought uh, that the situation in the Middle East would be calming down. Like, uh, it's not. I don't know. But um, also, when the crude oil rally, this is the chart of US. So, this particular rally in June was not confirmed by um, energy equities. Like the biggest companies, like XLE, uh, the index, I mean, the ETF. And OIH, they didn't participate at all, which was a bearish sign. So we gave it all. Uh, I, I don't think I'm bearish anymore. Uh, that's what, kind of what I was expecting. Now, if something happens in the Middle East, crude oil will go straight up. And it's going to be so bullish. God forbid, you know, something, you know, it turns into a wider war than, you know, obviously, it's bullish for commodities. Um, uh, right now I'm kind of neutral. I'm not buying crude oil yet, uh, but, uh, it's so again, around 200 day movie average, simple stuff. You can draw a line from here to here. Well, it's kind of holding the line. We might break it a little bit, you know, but overall, um, I think I wouldn't short it anymore, but I'm not buying it yet. I think I'm, 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 I don't i do not want to trade. Use, so. What would make you want to buy crude? Um, from a technical Technical standpoint, I would like to see that this sell-off is more part of consolidation. So maybe a few days of, say, going nowhere, right? Or at least not free falling. okay? So I would, I would like to see that the support is there. So all the traders are not, are not scared of this sell-off. So I, would, I don't want to be first. I would like to wait. So it's primarily check, primarily check. And the two things that... Working one thing that we're working for crude oil, and another, excuse me, and another thing against it for the bullish crude oil is what I mentioned the situation in, in the Middle East. 
a bearish yeah. is uh, a the recession economy, the economy yeah. and a pure demand. So if there is if there is a recession, and not just in the United States, so less demand, obviously we can go down and we can go down to, to the sixties or something. So we're going to the fifties, uh, possibly. Yeah. That's why I want to, again, kind of torn in between, you know, I'm a long-term bull, uh, but it's short-term, intermediate term, and kind of on the fence. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, leverage too. And there's deleveraging going on in the crude markets. Uh, yeah. there's, there's going to be a lot more pain. Another thing too, is there's a big election obviously coming up in, um, not to get too conspiratory, but the powers that be obviously want the lower crude oil, the better. So for consumers, so that's something you, to think about as well. That's true. Usually before elections, regardless of what party is in power, I mean, they try to look better and especially, yeah. especially at the gas pump, you know, yep. so now, all right, it's three bucks instead of five bucks. Thank you. Things are okay. Yeah. I know it's, a, yeah, I, mean, I don't want to be conspiracy, but I see it all the time. Yeah. Let's talk about the metals. Let's talk about gold and silver, but specifically gold. Gold's been um, not only holding up, but gold's been really at all-time highs here. Do you see any changes? And uh, do you even like gold here, despite the fact that it's at all-time highs? I still love it. I still like it. I think it's a good trend. See nothing wrong with that. That's one of the, the few things we were bullish on a couple of weeks ago, or a bit bullish for months, for that matter. Technically, don't see any problems. It's a trend. It's like two steps forward, one step back. No worries. Um, gold, silver is kind of stuck in the mud a little bit, but I think it'll. Uh, I mean, it can get more bullish silver because I think it's going to catch up with gold. I mean, they join by the head, obviously. Um, uh, but I, I, I think silver is getting is looking even better. And uh, I'm looking at gold stocks. They're doing fine. I'm, I mean, they. They pulled back a little because of the sell-off on the stock market and, you know, and they throw baby with a bat wood, as they say. So because their stocks, they went down a little, but they held up pretty well compared to other equities. No worries to me. I mean, every pullback is a buy. Uh, if you're folding it, hold it. Don't see any worries yet, um, especially with the situation and the world, geopolitical stuff, uncertainty about the elections. No reason to sell it. Really, no reason to sell it at all. So people are so, concerned. Only have just, two just, just, just so I'm clear, you're still bullish, or you still like the equities in here, correct? The gold equities, uh, gold equities, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like them even more because they pulled back a little bit. I actually would prefer them to lead gold forward. Uh, that happens a lot in commodities. Uh, and, you know, people think that commodities lead, and therefore. Uh, you know, stocks that are in companies that are involved in this commodity follow. Uh, a lot of times it's the other way around. I, uh, I, I prefer to see, uh, GDX, like one of the indexes would do better. Uh, I'm long GDX and, uh, I'll stay long. I see no problems at all. It's a good uptrend. Things are fine and not just, not just gold with other precious metals and commodities in general. So. Uh, yeah, and just so for our listeners, one of the strategies I really like with GDX or any of the large gold holdings, if you're a trader and that's what you have, I would be selling puts on a pullback here, collecting the premiums to, with the VIX shooting up. These premiums should be really, really juicy. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dennis. And then oh, you can absolutely. also, yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Let's take a look at the chart to get all this. Let me, uh, let me share this again and see where yep. they are. And while you're pulling that, that up. You can also, what you can do on half of your position, what I'm doing is just selling calls on half of your position. Again, with the VIX shooting up, these option premiums are so, so expensive, which is really nice. So when yeah. options are expensive, you want to be a seller, find strategy or find a way to be a seller. And when they're cheap, you want to be a buyer. Again, please correct me if I'm wrong, Dennis. You're absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. So uh, options are expensive. If, especially if uh, uh, the underlying gets a little overbought, sell them. It's fine if you're wrong a little bit. You know, yeah. So you're going to be taking out somewhere fire. Don't sell, you know, your position away. No, but uh, and buying puts, I think it's a great idea. Here's the chart puts. of selling puts. Selling puts. Yep. Sorry, selling puts. Yeah. Uh, this is a chart of GDX over the last year or so. Um, so it's going out, but not as much as gold. 
the blue line at the bottom, that's the implied volatility. It's getting out there. It's already at 34. Yep. So, um, and that maybe usually... sell those 35 foot on GDX. If the um, yeah. month out, I think that would be a great trade. Yeah. A month or two out, just take a look at it. I, I don't want to bore you with the exact prices right now, but yeah, why not? Give it to me at 35. I want it at 35. I want it at 35. And even if you like, let's say it goes a little bit lower. I mean, I'll take it at 34. I mean, I just would love it in here after this pullback year. Yeah, so. And- and you get you get paid a lot. I mean, look at this. Look at implied volatility. That's that's exactly what you want. Yeah, it, it, that applies to. Let's take a look at XLE um, Energy ETL. So it sold off a little Ooh, bit. Look at that. I would even look, be tempted to do an XLE or any yeah, other player. Well, I could, well, that's a spike of volatility. I mean, they're nervous. So yeah. Now it's at 26. Usually it's trading like at 16, 17, kind of like mix, you know. Now it's at 26. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, this is an 80. I'm trading at 88. So maybe take a look at 85 points or something like that. Yeah. Whatever. Kind of strike it. Yeah, and yeah. they're very quick. You know, you get, you get paid quite a bit. Let's take a look at OIH. I think it's suffering a little bit more. Let me see. Yeah, this is no OIH. Look at them. Look at the spike of implied volatility. I mean, look at that. Yeah. Look yeah, at that. They're, well, they're usually expensive, but now they're even more expensive. So sell some points. Yeah. So own. if I could just tell our listeners uh, this, Dennis and I would run a hedge fund together. This was again 15 years ago. This was one of the strategies that we had used. If I could advise, just use caution using this, even though it's a great strategy. When you're selling puts, you just want to make sure you really want the underlying asset that's the number one thing you just don't want to sell a bunch of puts because then you're going to be buying a bunch of the underlying asset so just make sure you have the money and the desire to own the asset so that's my well, two that's things my, money and money and the desire remember this is in every put and it's 100 shares so like yeah. like we take a look at oah it's trading at 300 it means you have to have thirty thousand dollars just in case you know yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could do it on margin, but if you want to own it, don't forget margin. So, yeah. so yeah. Be, be, be very, very wary of that. But another, again, uh, aware of that, I should say, another thing that you really wanted, again, what we talked about just to keep in mind is in trading options is, and I learned this from Dennis, you want to be selling options that are expensive and buy options that are cheap. And we both, Dennis and I, in their hedge fund as well as their own accounts, have made a lot of money precisely doing this. So. Precisely doing this. Yeah, watch that implied volatility. If you sell, if you sell options, if you want to own that underlying, I mean, selling puts right now, thank you so much. Thank you for that huge yep. implied volatility spike. So don't do it on S&P 500 because I don't want to own. Yeah, I don't exactly. Want to- yeah, maybe late. You yeah, know, but commodity related stuff. Yeah, I think it's uh, the right right thing to do. Just pick your spots this week. So yeah, we'll see. No, why yeah. don't get flat? Yeah, I think we're coming into it right now too. We're coming into the teeth of this. Um, another thing too is just for an example, I want to say it was two thousand seven ish. Um, we were selling. I don't know if I was doing this with you or not, but I. I sold a bunch of puts on a lot of commodity stocks. This was 2000, 2009. I take that back. Spring 2009, near the bottom. But there was so much volatility, so much um, negative sentiment, especially on the banks. And I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, a lot of these commodity stocks, they're, just, they're not going to go out in business. But BHP, Billington, um, yeah. you could do it in New Mind, Spiric. Um, again, just pick your favorite. Pick your favorite uh, mining or energy stock um, when, again, the volatility is this high. And you're going to make, uh, we, I was clearing, I want to say 20% a week um, right before expiration. I'm not saying we're going to get there this time, and I'm not saying that's where the options are. I need to check them. But that's what? the kind of money you're talking about, and it's you're getting paid to own an asset that you love. So. I did all this on the banks uh, when the banks were all crashing and nobody knew they exist. With the exist anymore, I took a flyer. I did yeah. this on a couple of banks. I made 50% in just a couple of days. And it was just, again, there was a big risk. I get it. 
But again, it just shows you that there's a lot of, when there's volatility, you want to be a seller, not a buyer. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. You, you want to look at that? Yes. Sell those. Sell those. Absolutely. Um, I, I think it's the right time to do it. And we, you and I did it before. So whether, whether our fund or, or, or individual accounts, and I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be doing it again this week, which is, it's there. Yeah. Excellent. All right, Dennis, to, uh, bring the land, the plane here, what, uh, final thoughts do you have for people going into the, the week and, uh, until we see you next week, what would you tell our listeners and viewers? Uh, a lot of nervousness in the market, a lot of volatility. I think volatility will continue until the elections or thereabout until October, November. There are too many things, the economy, uh, the Middle East, elections, a lot of other geopolitical stuff. Uh, people are nervous. Uh, it's a trading market. It might be a stock pickers market. We mentioned it last time. Yeah. Yeah, just put some puts on uh, stuff that you like and uh, just pick your spots. If you're buying something, pick your spots. But volatility right. will continue. It's not going to go away on Monday, Tuesday. It's going to continue. Yeah. And then again, on that, if it's going to continue, and I believe it will be if, as an option trader or even as just a trader in general, volatility is your friend, everybody. Volatility is your friend. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, VIX is trading at 10. It's so boring. You don't know what the heck. Hey, that's <laughs> exactly. Oh, you like me or really. What am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. This is right what needs a lot of money. Yeah. So. yeah you so. All right. Thanks a lot, Dennis. We'll see you again next week. Always, Andy. Thank you. Appreciate you. Bye.